I think we can recreate the famous trench run scene from A New Hope in a day. Our idea is to do it as easily and casually as possible while still having it look better than the original movie. You guys better be careful because Disney may be coming after you. <laughs> There's nothing I like better than looking at old visual effects and imagining all the sweat, blood, and tears that went into doing those old visual effects and then flippantly and casually recreating those same visual effects in a day. We've done it with Tron, we've done it with Terminator 2, and now we're going to do it with Star Wars, specifically the trench run. Because back in the day, when they made this trench run scene, it was a lot of work because there weren't really any computer effects. In fact, the only computer effect in the original Star Wars, A New Hope, is the wireframe of the Death Star when they're discussing Death Star plans. I think we can recreate the famous trench run scene from A New Hope in a day, particularly because of the help of Fenner here. I'm Fenner Rockliffe. I'm a uh, compositor primarily, work as kind of a CGI generalist. Down here visiting the quarter crew this week. Arguably Fenner does more professional stuff than we do. He's working in things like Nuke, he's working at VFX houses, he's working on some TV shows. So with a little bit of this like professional mix in with like the road, we should be able to bang out a pretty cool Death Star trench run scene. Our idea is to do it as easily and casually as possible while still having it look better than the original movie. Well, let's take a look at the original trench run and break it down just a little bit here, and we'll pick out a little sequence to do. Okay, here we go. This is an amazing shot. This it could really be probably is. one of the most amazing shots from the trench run. So yeah, we should, we should do this shot. Yeah, I think we have to do this shot now. One thing I'm noticing also is the lasers don't cast any light. These bright beams of plasma energy are not illuminating the trench at all. It would be really cool to see them fly down the trench and see that glow. Yeah, get some of that laser. interactive lighting. Maybe this is a good ending point. Okay, so this explosion that we're looking at here, you can see the blue spill on it very clearly. What they're doing is they're filming a model and an explosion on the blue screen and then keying out the blue. But it's not a perfect key by any means. What would be cool is to see an explosion that doesn't have blue screen fringing or transparent smoke, possibly even casting light on the trench around it. I think a big part of it too will be matching the look of those CG renders to the original footage. Oh yeah. Making it look more filmic. I that's... think that's something we want to achieve. So let's go from swooping into the trench to the first Y-wing being blown up. Yeah. And let's just take some creative liberties. One of us is responsible for an X-wing, one's responsible for the Y-wing. I'll do an X-wing. Yeah, sounds good. I might handle the Y-wing there. Break. All right. For George. For George. Before I do the trench run using modern visual effects techniques, I'm going to simulate doing it the way they had to do it in 1977. I'm still going to do it in a 3D program just because I don't have actual models or a Dijkstra Flex, which is the computer controlled arm, but all the other steps will be authentic to how they had to do it. When they wanted to do these shots, they had to do it all with models and they had to do it camera passes. So imagine I'm at ILM and the model shop has just delivered to me an awesome, Star Wars trench. My gaffing team, my grip team, went ahead and set up some lights. And I have a nice point light. If I, there it is, whoa, it's so bright. I also have a soft box, which is this big rectangle here. It's a little dark. So I'd have to physically move my light <laughs> to be in the right spot. But here I can just slide this virtual light. But same idea. So I'm Dennis Murin, and I'm like, well, what shot do I want? I want to get a shot looking down on an X-Wing as it flies down the trench. And I want to push into it and then rotate behind it. And so I got my first keyframe here. I typed in my code at the Dexter Flex, and we have the camera follow along and swoop down. And once again, they couldn't do real-time playback because the computer-controlled arm did not move in real time. It was basically stop motion. It moved, take a picture, move, take a picture, move, take a picture. So after you program your motion, you can just hit play and watch things swoop through it and be like, that's cool, that's what I like. So I'm just gonna try to just not look at the animation. I'm just going to try to dial it in by hand. And then you have to film it on film. You don't get to look at it on a computer screen. You have to wait for the shots to expose and develop. So, let's pretend I now have to wait until tomorrow. Okay, it's tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> let's see how it looks. Pretty cool. So now notice that I have like sharp edges in my animation, right? It's like, and it kind of locks. In Cinema 4D, I can just tell it to smooth out and average out these motions. They didn't have that. They had to like manually punch in every single position. Right click, spline. <laughs> right click, spline. Done! <laughs> <laughs> Time to get another shot. Send it off to the film lab to be exposed. Another day. 
has passed. My trench is complete. So perhaps in parallel, somebody else is working on the X-Wings. Well, the X-Wing's not the same size as the trench. They haven't been built to scale. This X-Wing model could be huge. So I'm going to kind of do it how they did, just with a little less math and a little more artistic eye. But one thing that's worth mentioning is they had to film all their models on a blue screen. They'd have to stick it on a blue stick like this. So if I wanted to simulate this X-Wing flying by me, I'd have the X-Wing hold still and the camera would swoop in and the X-Wing would fly by. So if the model holds still but the background appears to move, it makes it look like the model's moving. All right, so I made my animation. Time to see if my shot's cool. Pretty freaking janky. Now I need to go into my dope sheet and my curve editor and start working with my plots. Did I screw it up? Who knows? The director came back with notes. He's like, you know, the X-Wing leads the bottom of the frame. I want you to push it back just a little bit. So I'm adding some new points here. Hope they worked out. Let's get the shot. Set it in the film lab. <laughs> okay, moving a little fast. Director has more notes. Slow it down. But it's already locked into the trench run shot we got, boss. You approved that earlier. I got one second to make that swoop. Can't change it. Okay, cool. Ready to go? Wrong. Now we need to set the lighting. So they could just copy and paste their lighting setup from the trench their X-Wing models. They could take notes and they could try to replicate it. But you couldn't just copy and paste it. You couldn't just save your 3D scene and open it with new lighting. I have a directional light coming from the left in the trench shot and I have a softbox above. So now I need to recreate that for this X-Wing. Softbox is easy enough. Let's just put that over the X-Wing. Now what about like the daylight? Well, here's the question. Does the X-Wing dip into the shadow of the trench? It does. So that directional light needs to be blocked off. I'm going to have to turn it off entirely. Then I'm going to emulate the bounce light hitting the side of the trench and illuminating the side of that, the X-Wing from the side of the trench that's all illuminated. And there we go, now I have one on the side. Is it too bright? Hard to say. This is where you gotta bust out your light meters and like, okay, here is giving me a read, read of this much light. On um, the trench, gave me a read of this much light. Did it look right? Who knows? <laughs> That's the thing. You have to kind of just guess. Take my trench shot. This is what I have on one film reel. And then I have this X-Wing on another film reel. So now I need to process it. I need to composite it. So back in the day, you would use a series of different filters to eventually print a piece of film that's black and white. The background, the blue being black and everything that is what you want to save being white or the inverse of that, depending on what stage you're doing. We're going to use basic old color keying. We'll see how they pair up. Not that bad, honestly. Notice how the lighting feels somewhat disconnected between the two. And you'll notice the exact same look in the original trench run shots, where the models kind of feel like they're lit a little bit differently in the background. And that's because they're not in the background. It's because they're just two separate things that have been filmed at separate times. Wait, 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 I'm not done yet. Hey, you got some lasers. Let's just do it like they did. Get into all freaking laser. Boom, classic Star Wars laser. Let's just see that one laser in action. Pew, pew. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. This is how they did it. Granted, I'm doing the steps on the computer to simulate how they did it, but you have an idea now of the steps they had to go through. But now they showed you the old school way of doing things, let me show you the new school way of doing things. This is the part where I get to show you all the cool things that modern technology enables us to do. So the very first thing that we have in advantage over the guys at ILM for 1977 is there's a whole bunch of people that love Star Wars now and have already made all the models for us in 3D. <laughs> so I just went online and I got an X-Wing model. We found uh, just a rough Death Star trench chunk that Fender then added bits of greebles or geometry to. So here we have the Death Star trench. And this is actually just a bunch of little chunks here that we've copied and pasted. I took that and I made a material for it that's a mixed material. And this gives me a lot of surface variation. I've also added some little windows. And that's really nice, especially when things are motion blurred, you get nice little light streaks. After I've done this texture adjustment, I have my trench. So now I want to animate some X-Wings. All I need to do is place an object in the scene, scoot it from one end to the other, and attach the X-Wings to that. <laughs> you don't have to wait a whole day? You do not have to wait a whole day. And in fact, you can preview your animations whenever you want. Oh, you see those white tubes flying by? Those are lasers. I built a particle emitter that shoots lasers. In fact, I can aim that particle emitter wherever I want. And I can make multiple versions of it, so I can have multiple laser guns shooting turrets everywhere. And one of the really cool things about having your lasers be a part of the physical scene that you are working on is that those lasers will cast light onto your objects. Directional lighting gives everything volume and shape and helps you feel the physicality of it. It looks pretty freaking rad. <laughs> Check this out. The X-Wing that's in the top left corner of this frame, that X-Wing is casting a shadow on the side of the Death Star. I am showing you that those X-Wings are in the same world as this trench. I'm showing you the scale of the X-Wings. I'm showing you how fast they're moving and how close they are to the wall. Flex. Flex on ILM in 1977. 
Whoa, hey guys, it's me, Jake, here in my fighter jet, here to tell you about CorridorDigital.com. That's right, if you like how we create videos here, we have an entire show called Crew Cuts with over 80 episodes of vlog-style content of us doing things like this every single day. There's also the greatest Dungeons & Dragons show that we made through the website subscribers called Son of a Dungeon. It's dropping in September. Whoa, gotta keep these upright. Gotta keep steering this X-Wing. We also have an entire show called Functional Filmmaking. It's an expedition into how we create things and what our philosophy and mindset is when we go into creating content and guess what no ads you get 15% off all merchandise we have an amazing system called producer points which allows you to put your subscription dollars into shows that we want to make everything we do on YouTube it'll always be here but if you want more head on over to cordadigital.com two months free you get if you sign up for a year that's right I said it like Yoda and I'll say it again two months free you get when you sign up for a year <laughs> what am I where am I? Am I? Am I in a green screen right now? I gotta get back to work. There's a whole bunch more things that we can do once we are done with our 3D render. So let's go take a look at what Fenner's up to and have him tell us all about what makes Nuke so wonderful. So I've been pumping out cool renders, you've been pumping out cool renders, you've been taking those renders into Nuke and really dressing them up with a whole bunch of additional looks and effects. Yeah. This render just came out of Blender Cycles. Right out of Blender, it actually looks pretty janky. It just kind of looks like a motion blurred mess and there's not a lot of contrast going on. So this is where I find that Nuke is really helpful. I render with like a multi-channel EXR and then I have multiple AOVs that I can adjust and kind of dial in the look afterwards. You have your kind of beauty layer here and then I have my like ambient occlusion. And the other nice thing is too, is we can just isolate out our emissive passes here. So I've got all the kind of lights that are within the trench and all of the different lasers as well. And this is really helpful because then I can kind of do some cool post effects on this standard stuff like glows and then get a little bit more in depth and start to add some kind of like distortion and heat effects coming off it. So it makes it more than just the basic like cylinder laser kind of particle system that we set up. And then a big thing that we're adding that really kind of helps sell that filmic cinematic look is doing a bit of like a lens dirt setup. So I've got a couple different textures here and we're basically using these and driving them by a keyed version of like the luminance here. We get a little bit of kind of that like natural fall off that you'd see through a camera lens. And then sometimes if it's bright enough, you're gonna pick up an actual little bit of texture, kind of grime on the lens. I also like to just always kind of kiss in some additional stuff for a shot like this, like lens barreling as if we're kind of like pinging the kind of edges of our camera's lens, add some vignette to kind of draw the viewer's eye to where we want it to go then a bit of healthy dose of chromatic aberration. It helps kind of give that contrast, which again, pretty subtle. I also added in a little bit of off-screen flaring and I can find that like, you know, that's something if you're shooting practically, you're gonna get that, right? You're gonna yeah, have- you don't have to even think about it. Yeah, it's just gonna happen. <laughs> I've got like a little bit of a LUT applied here to make it look more filmic. And then just kind of a healthy dose of lens distortion on the bottom there, just to kind of play up a little bit of that pseudo anamorphic look to it. Once we've got our 235 crop on there, you go from something that didn't look very cinematic before. <laughs> just That's pretty extreme. Off, you go to that. So yeah. That's really, a huge difference. And now because you basically have this node tree, you can theoretically just swap your input image sequence to a different image sequence, and all this math and filters and functions that you build will all still flow through, and you'll end up basically with all these effects applied to a new piece of footage, Yeah. just by simply retargeting the very first node. Maybe this isn't the correct way to do this, but when we're doing this in like a week and trying to turn around a bunch of stuff, it's just kind of like, what can we do quickly that's gonna get us to the finish line? Cool, well then we'll get to have a really cool side-by-side -side comparison of the original shots in the trench run, our shots that we did in just a few days, and maybe even a little sequence where you get to see our shots cut into the movie to see how they fit. Stay tuned to see our cool renders. All right, we are joined by Sam and Brendan from So Chrissy Media. Have you ever heard of Shock Warfare? That's like a bajillion views on YouTube. Well, these are the guys that made it. Also, Dean, the resident Star Wars Ultra fan, though so you might have to fight Christian for that title to we'll see who the real Ultra fan is. Well, I mean, just watch back the Node trivia challenge. He was there. He lost, uh, apparently. <laughs> I want to show you guys a project that Fenner and I have been working on. I'm curious to see what you guys think All right, about the final right, results. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we just kind of walked in here and we don't know what to expect. So let's see how this goes. <laughs> I'm really curious here. Switch to targeting. Your eyes open for those spiders. I'll take them myself.
You guys better be careful because Disney might be coming after you. <laughs> it looks incredible. Like it absolutely looks incredible. The glow on those lens flares. Who did the compositing for this? Uh, uh, right here. Yeah. And who are you? <laughs> <laughs> who am I? <laughs> Dude, that lens flare right on the top. That is like the cherry. It's the spice, top. right? It's yeah. the yeah. spice. I like the lens distortion bulge. Yeah, that's what it's say. It's subtle, but mm, it really like makes it work. You see the reflection of like the Death Star trench on the canopy, whereas you don't have that in the models because they're filmed separately. I think the biggest difference we were noticing is the originals. There's no interactive lighting. Like even some of the shots where like the Y wings are in the trench, they're fully lit. They're not actually having any of the shadow from the trench. It's so much more dynamic than the original shot. Are there lights on here? Mm -hmm. Like are there little omissive yep. zones? Okay. They actually have it in the real trench also. It's a really nice textural effect to the trench. It's bouncing this light. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh, we're getting a little technical. <laughs> you're, right, you're right, Brandon noticed. There's a it's also soft box right here, shining uh, soft light down into the trench. And that's the reflection of it right there. Okay. Yeah. It's obviously, it's not visible to the camera, but it is visible to reflections. But you can notice how like the lasers actually reflect off of R2's head, oh, yeah. which is really nice. Sweet with the green flares flying by on him. We're gonna take a look at some of the fender shots here. What a love green. Like the glow from the engines on the Y-Wings. I added in some lights there and they're just kind of like parented to the actual models of the Y-Wings there. So you actually get them like kind of lighting up the trench as they're flying through the shadows there. I like the little subtle camera jitter too, making it feel like this camera is just flying down the trench. Oh, that looks oh, very, very yeah, nice. It's a lot more dynamic. You actually have some rotation happening yeah. here. I gotta say, these shots are like high budget TV quality shots. Like, <laughs> I agree. I agree, I agree with, with you. That. You know, Disney, like they got a thousand artists working on it for months, but like you guys whipped up in a week what could go on HBO. Oh yeah, that's flashy. I will say the motion looks pretty accurate to the original Star Wars movies, because didn't they have those models on like just a line? And yeah. It was, just, it was wiggling yeah. on the line. Yeah. This is the shot where you're like, all right, now we need like Houdini on top of all this. <laughs> it's one thing to build the model and make it look nice, but then to build the internals of it, have it actually destroy itself, yeah. that's a whole other crazy process. I think when you throw some explosives in a model and you just roll the camera and you blow it up, it's so much harder to get that same quality with CGI. And you know, it is lighting up the trench behind it. Smoke is flying off it. Those are things that you can't really do with models. Yeah. Did you say you guys were going to remaster the whole thing now? <laughs> Should we just remaster the entire trench now? I feel like it's been a couple years since they remastered the whole thing. You know, <laughs> yeah. we're due for another remaster. Do it for George, man. Do it for George. So that's the next video, we practically recreate the trench run. <laughs> Actually, that would be pretty cool. We thought we haven't thought about it. Let us know in the comments below if uh, you want us to try to practically redo the trench run, or if there's another old movie effect that you want us to try to reapproach in just a few days using modern technology. And consider subscribing. Consider subscribing.